before you leave. What were you doing here today? What was I doing here today? I yeah. was up here attending this meeting to try and pull the Dakota people together so our yeah. own story would be told accurately, fairly, and on the record. Because mm -hmm. our people, our children need to know, my grandchildren need to know yeah. where we came from and what good people they came there yeah, from. Exactly, a beautiful and, way of life. Yes, exactly. I've always believed that uh, you have to know where you come from to know where you're going yeah. in life. That's what this is all about. Yeah, in order to be proud of who you are, you didn't know where you came from. We came from some doggone good people. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, if we don't tell that and let our kids know, because too many of our children living on the reservations now think that that's where we're from. We originated there, and we didn't. Mm -hmm. We came from up here, you know, on this land of the lake. Yeah, I think today, you know, we said, a, a, there were a lot of things that you said that really echoed uh, I think my own feelings, and there were uh, other people. This was a, a great meeting. It was. I was really pleased with uh, some of the things that were said. Um, one of the things that we had talked about was that um, uh, my name is Tamara St. John from Sisseton Wapiton, and uh, I work for the Tribal Historic Preservation Office. And the goal of our office is to not only preserve and protect our history and our cultural sites, but also to, um, to maintain or to take control of our cultural history ourselves and to um, tell our own stories. And so in this, and we've been watching the 1862 project and um, wanting to be a part of it, but we didn't know how. And it's been an ongoing uh, sort of an issue that um, it's our homeland and it's, a, it's so much a, a, a part of our everyday life and yet um, it, it often feels like to our elders that they don't have a voice here. Yeah. And so I think that, uh, you know, this is the first time I think that we've been invited to, um, you know, insert our own, our own words and our own history. And I think uh, sometimes those things happen not because we're not wanted, so much as it is that we haven't been assertive enough to, to be present. And we can't let these things uh, pass us by and not participate and then feel bad that it's not a reflection of ourselves. So generally speaking, you know, people in looking for history will turn universities or the historical societies are not um, speaking to us. And most of the time that's because those requests for information aren't streamlined directly to us. And uh, by acting as a, a historical resource through our Tribal Historic Preservation Offices and our, our THIPOs, we are able to uh, address those and to get our voice out there in a lot of different ways. So to have a very active Thipo office like you do now, and um, that the, like the other tribes do, is just phenomenal because we can present a, a united front. Yeah. And one of the things that we had said in there that I thought was um, absolutely perfect was that not a one of us can tell the story on our own. We need every piece of the, the story. We all have a, a different perspective and a section of that story and we have to put it all together. So by um, talking to just one fraction of the Totanka Oyate, or the, um, the, the Great Sioux Nation, as it used to be referred to, um, they're only getting a, a, a fraction. And looking at some of the things that would unite us and the return of our, our kinship ties and our cultural ways, and to be able to uh, do things that unify us as opposed to divide us. Um, it's easy to divide ourselves into Lakota, Nakota, and Dakota. Um, one of the things that we said, even amongst our own reservation, we can easily divide ourselves into districts, yes. who's from where, or even by families. Yes. So instead of, um, you know, following in, in that line of thinking, you know, we want to uh, focus on the things that show us how close we are. We share those things. You know, we don't have a, a network or a place to. And uh, it would be, you know, I guess my dream, along with obviously, you know, many others, to.
develop a, a central location for a, a database and a, a historical resource such as Wakpa uh, Shicha in, in here, and to be able to combine all of the family histories and the, the genealogies of, of the Tatanko You know, when you, you think about the 1862 war and the fact that Minnesota wants to commemorate it, hopefully nobody will celebrate it, but in commemorating it, they forget that we're all outside of Minnesota. There's communities here in Minnesota, but there's no federally recognized Dakota governments, tribal governments. And so we need to keep, they need to keep in mind that we're all over, you know, in five states as well as Canada. And, you know, and what she was saying about the genealogy, you know, you talk, you look at it, we're all related. That's what that, you know, Midaku Malasi, you know, we're all related because I can go to every reservation and find relatives. Yeah. You know, I've got a lot of relatives on Siston, a lot of relatives at Yankton, a lot of relatives, you know, I've got relatives on Rosebud, Pine Ridge, Crow Creek, mm -hmm. you know, you name it, Cheyenne River. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we, we, if you think about it, we're, you know, we came from one root place and we were spread out from there. So I think if we could get that family tree, that, the base tree, that trunk, and you start peeling off and going off in all these different branches, it's going to be so exciting to see how we all yeah. really are related. You know, not only um, is it one thing, one point that you make that I thought was so, so well put in there, in, be, in being careful of the language that we use, because as far as saying a celebration, I mean, it's very important to, to know that um, for us, there, you know, it is not a celebration. No. There, there's nothing to celebrate no. in it. So a uh, commemoration being um, the ideal, when we talked about when we talk about such sensitive and very traumatic history, um, such as Whitestone Hill, the one thing um, a good thing in a in a very bad uh, story um, was that we were going through that history, all of us together, all of the tribes, and for us all to look at this and and look at such a terrible thing and face that and understand that or feel sad even together was in itself something that I thought was very powerful and healing. And in this, I mean, as tribes to go and look at 1862 and, and look at the reality of what happened, that uh, you know we will face all of this together. Like when you grieve, um, it's good to, or you lose a, a relative, it's nice to have um, all of the family yep. there. Mm -hmm. And in a way, so that's... to share your tears. Right, exactly. Peter, what did you think of? You were the one that wanted us down here to record this because you must have felt there was going to a lot here. Um, there was a lot here. I mean, it's a, it's a stepping stone to something far greater than we've ever hoped or dreamed that, you know, it would be. It's from starting from very meager beginnings right now, but I can see it snowballing and, you know, bringing us together even more, which is what we're all here for. I mean, it, brought me together with a family member who I never met. I'm, I know her father well, and her brother, Tom St. John, who everybody knows Tom, right. you know, <laughs> right. world yeah. champion fancy dancer, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've never met uh, Tamara, and that's what this is all about, yeah. is bringing our people together, uh, instead of uh, separating us by reservations, uh, districts, like she said. There's, uh, there are many things going on right now across the Indian country that are geared towards the same thing that this is doing. You know, like, uh, um, um, one thing that sticks out in my mind, you know, of course you know I'm involved with the Dakota 30 plus 2 old King Suye horse ride. We ride from uh, Crow Creek there, we start there December 9th, and we ride 360 miles to the hanging site here in Mankato, out here 10 miles. And that, uh, that's bringing uh, all the different Dakota bands together every year. There's more and more writers. Uh, Santee, the, the Dakota bands from Canada come down and help us. You know, uh, this year there'll be uh, Dakota bands that people forgot about out in Montana. Wolf Point out there, you know, in that section. Um, they're coming this year also. So there's, uh, there's something beautiful happening across the... Uh, um, as, as the world knows us, you know, the, the, the great Sioux Nation. It's happening and it's always been a dream of mine to be, mm -hmm. you know,
know about it, and I think it's going to happen in my lifetime, and I hope it does. That, you know, we and our warriors that have been there forever, always ready to give the end of this land, you know, and First World War, they were drafted, and they, they went in as others. You know, we were, or they were Caucasians. We were members, yeah. We were, no, we weren't, we weren't even right. citizens, no. yeah. That's right. But right up until this time, First World War, Second World War, Korean conflict, Vietnam conf uh, War, uh, Panama, Afghans are still going and protecting us. At a very high rate. Very, very, of all the ethnic groups, American Indians volunteer in higher percentages than any other people in this country. And, you know, and I, I know I'm very proud of the warriors in my family. All my brothers, my two sons, my uncles, my aunts, my sister, you know. Mm -hmm. And you just think about all of the rest of the tribal membership, you know, your family, your family, you know. We have some highly decorated veterans. And, I, and, and reminded me by seeing that Vietnam veteran <laughs> shirt you have on, Lyle. Um, you had mentioned that, uh, and, and I didn't know this, uh, as far as a relative of ours. Yes. Um, in about two weeks, I'll be going to Washington, D.C. to accept the medal from the president on behalf of my grandfather, Edmund St. John, who was a co talker in World War II. Oh, I wish. And, uh, wow. That Let me just shake your hand. My uncle, Guy Rondell, was yeah. one of the. Really? Yes. From the system. And I was show. just, uh, sure. uh, uh, a couple months ago, I was asked to, uh, um, to do something uh, that uh, um, I thought I'd never see. I was asked to come to Washington, D.C. and place a wreath on the Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers. Fantastic. So I went out there and I represented uh, the veterans, I represented the Crow Creek Sioux Tribe, and I re represented the Dakota, Lakota, Nakota Nation. You know, those might be uh, across, across uh, the Sioux Nation here, there's over 2,000 uh, missing, missing in action, you know, Sioux warriors. Could be really, laying, I didn't know that number. That could be them laying in those tombs. Oh, yeah. So on their behalf, I was asked to come out and place that wreath there. We did it right after uh, the vice president did his. Of course, they don't show that on TV. The return to our homelands mm -hmm. also is a return to our uh, our burial sites yes. Yes. of our, our yeah. ancestors. And uh, you know, ideally, when um, to when something happens with these things, or if they're in danger or if there's knowledge that needs to be known, um, that they be able to access us mm -hmm. so that we can um, know or to be consulted. Even, um, of course, the Tribal Historic Preservation Offices work with Section 106, and it, it's very vital. Um, one of the gentlemen had said about, you know, the, the ceremonial sites, the places that we had formerly used for ceremony, um, at Whitestone Hill, you know, immediately the first thing that um, our elders did there when they had access finally back to that site was to, to pray and to, to have ceremony and to remember those that had, um, that there. Uh, obviously they were, were murdered and, and killed there. Uh, people that, uh, you know, that we are a, a direct result of, of everything of them. They're mm -hmm. the, their every effort to survive, we are, the, you know, us just existing right. speaks mm -hmm. to um, their ability to survive, and you know, we need to remember them, whether it be the the burial mounds themselves, or whether it be um, even just the 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 grave sites. I know I have ancestors that um, uh, had buried one of my great 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 grandmothers, and we know about where along Graceville. And um, so, you know, when we, when I read in the paper about uh, uncovering unearthing remains, you know, it, it's not an artifact. It's not a, you know, it's a, it's family. And there was uh, the uh, descendant of Big Eagle here. There's descendants of Wabasha. There's descendants of, and it goes on and on and on. Red so wing. yeah, yeah. Red wing. Descendants of the 38 that were exactly. named. That's right. And, and That's you know, right. on that list of 38, number 39 was uh, a guy by the name of uh, Maza Adidi, mm -hmm. my great grandfather. You know, and so I always feel like you know, I was you know, for some reason we were blessed. He yeah. was blessed for us to even be here. You know, the, and those stories they exist. You know, there are people that we may not know. Um, in my family, actually, in the Saint John side of my family. Um, we do 
know that there were uh, we, there were two individuals that were home that day that were members of our family, and the grandmother used to cry. They say used to cry every Christmas and say that um, they had uh, killed, that they had died there, that they had been killed there, and they used to say that the youngest one there was our relative. And uh, the youngest one was, um, I think, um, they say Tate Kake, you know, Windmaker. There's, you know, there's stories that go along with that. And I may not, you know, even with a, a huge focus on genealogy, be able to trace back to that individual. But yet at the same time, you know, I, I know them and know, you know, and, the, and that's just me and my family. There's so much. You know, more. Um, like um, Miss St. John here, I just met her. I think what she does is one of the most important roles in Indian country. You know, our young people today, they are struggling with an identity crisis. They, are. they don't know where they come from. They are identifying with uh, African American race, uh, Spanish American you know, What she is doing is just uh, incredible. You know, she is making this known to us. She's bringing this, this history, this, this family ties back to us. And uh, I commend you for that. How long have you been working in that capacity? Um, probably well over 10 years. And it really starts with uh, just grandparents and wanting to know. Um, I used to take care of my, help take care of my grandparents. Um, my grandmother was developing Alzheimer's. So I'm wanting to identify photos and, and visiting with them. Um, you know, it, it just began to snowball. You know, I would try to um, document or, or find, you know, documentation. We live in an age of technology where I would find uh, something that, you know, my grandfather was talking about. And it, it went back, and it went further back, and then it went into 1862, and then it went into, and then mapping on out. You know, that's why I really believe that in this project to include genealogy is going to provide that 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 sort of a a, a route, um, and it'll encompass all of the all of the the different tribes and. Mm -hmm. And as we, you know, note all of the families, so which is yeah. healing to us, mm -hmm. exactly, yeah. very much so, mm -hmm. from that historic trauma. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit how you compare Crow Creek. I mean, this is this was kind of a main. I mean, really a main where, they, where, where after Minnesota was taken out, mm -hmm. uh, and and your Santee. So both of you together that's right. are the two principal. I mean, not to leave Sisseton no, out here, right, but though. we say that at Sisseton as well. Mm -hmm. So what does that make you two feel like? Uh, we're home. Well, I don't know if you remember, Lyle, but at that one, uh, the meeting up in uh, Winona, I don't know if you remember when I got up and talked and I said that I wish I had brought a Santee Sioux Nation flag. Mm -hmm. I would have climbed those bluffs and I would have reclaimed that in the name of the <laughs> Santee Sioux Nation. <laughs> uh, because it really Santa is home. Lee, Lee, Lee. All yeah. right. <laughs> you know, because you know, you get a really good feeling about about coming back here, mm -hmm. and you don't even know why sometimes. Yeah, exactly. It's not feeling like coming yeah. home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and all of a sudden, I find myself singing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and whether, right. yeah, you know, and, and so, you know, I, I really enjoy coming to Minnesota. I really do, even with all the conflicting feelings. But, you know, I, I, Lyle, I need to say this. You know, I, I worry so much about what's happening in Indian country. And then I look at young people like these two, and I see some of my nephews, and I know we're leaving this in good hands because I, I'm one of the tribal elders. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say my next birthday, I'm going to be 68 years old. And so I'm going to be running out of energy. You know? And so to see these young people like this, you know, coming up and just being so brilliant. You know, and so dedicated to what they're doing, it just does my heart. Yeah, it does mine too. And I. <laughs>